It is good to be back with you again. And here we are in Florida, but that's where I am. You just happen to be joining me while I'm in Florida. I know that a lot of you are scattered all over the country from one coast to the other, southern coast to northern boundaries. Uh, we have some folks overseas that join in and uh, watch our videos and, and worship with us. It is just a great time to be alive. I know that sounds, uh, makes a strange statement, but it really is because we're learning some new things and we're learning how to navigate some new things and to share with one another and to be there with one another. And so these are, these are stressful days, but yet isn't it amazing what we're learning and how we're moving in what we're doing? Uh, God is really doing some neat things in the lives of people. And just hearing from some of you, uh, some of the emails that, that I have gotten are quite private. Uh, but I do get some, uh, some emails that say, really appreciated listening to the message. It makes me feel that I was at home. <laughs> Meaning, you know, here's one of our snowbirds. I get another email that says, you know, I wish... You could take care of the shine on the top of your head. Well, uh, see what I can do about that. But uh, short of wearing a hat or a wig, I don't think that's going get, to get, uh, get fixed. But at the same time, folks are saying it is a comfort to be able to know that I can listen to these messages at any time during the week. Thank you so much for bringing hope into my life. How neat is that? And folks, your faithfulness and your sharing and the things that you're doing is an encouragement to me and to others. So don't ever think that the small things that you do in your life don't matter. People are watching, people are hearing, and you really are making a difference in people's lives. As I have been really searching my heart and, and praying for what I would share with you today, uh, a passage of scripture really, uh, really came to mind and it spoke to my heart. It is a passage that is located in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. That's Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And just follow along. You'll see that it will come up on your screen there. Follow along as I read, okay? The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look. I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come, O oh, breathe from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. 
they all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, We have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. God's word for God's people. How many of us feel dried up and feel as if life has been drained from us? My friends, God has a plan. Today, our attention turns to the mighty movement of the Spirit of God and how that movement changes lives by his indwelling presence and the power that he has in our day-to-day -day affairs. This text gives us a wonderful example of restoration, rebirth, and refocus. All of these things are necessary for our personal well-being an outlook. Look at all the facts that we find in this passage. First of all, in the first two verses, God gets our attention. He gets our attention. Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the Spirit to a valley filled of dry bones. God gets our attention. God carries us to the place that he wants us to be. Now, there can be those times in our lives when we feel like life is really gone. Our sense of purpose, our realization of the times, when we contemplate what is now the new normal. I cannot tell you how many people that have told me I just can't wait to get my life back. I can't wait for life to return to normal. I can't wait until we are able to be out and about again. Now, I understand that with us being in Florida and you being in other parts of the country, some of you are in Florida, obviously, but we have people across the country, as I've already stated, and different parts of the country are beginning to open up little by little. And still people are saying, I want my life back. You know, I wonder if this time in these days is an opportunity for us to take a bit of an inventory. That we can use this opportunity to allow God to speak to us, to get a hold of us, to show us conditions around us, to show us the condition of our own lives, to cause us to look around and think. Speaking of thinking, in verse 3, God moves Ezekiel to think big. Son of man, can these bones become living people again? <laughs> God moves us to think big by asking the big questions, by getting us to think about possibilities, by slowing our response to a seemingly simple question. Now, if we were surrounded by a pile of bones 
and someone asked, could these live again? All we would probably think, well, it depends if there's any functional DNA in those bones. We tend to think scientifically. God speaks to us on spiritual levels. But if we were asked this question, could these bones live again? We would have to pause and say, how should I answer that question? Hmm, let me think about this for a moment. Is this a trick question? If I say no, he will do it. If I say yes, will he ask me to do it? Oh my, perish the thought that we might need to get involved in the leading of God, right? Perish the thought that God may be asking us to take an active role in something. Can these bones live again? An ancient wise man once picked up a small bird. He was asked a question. Is the bird in your hands alive? The wise man said, what do you think? And the person that asked him the question paused and thought for a moment and said to himself, if I say the bird is alive, he will snuff the life out of this small bird and show me the small lifeless body. If I say that the bird is dead, he will open up his hands and set a live bird free. So the person looking at this wise man answered this way. He said, that decision is in your hands. Wow, what a profound way to look at things. And yet if God says, can there be life that comes forth from what we now see as being dead and dry? <laughs> Maybe we should move along with the story. I don't want to give away the ending. But by presenting us with circumstances, unlike anything that we've ever seen before, God calls upon us to think big. We've never lived through a pandemic of, of this magnitude before. We have lived through a lot of different circumstances, and depending on our age, we can draw on a lot of experience. But I think that it's safe to say that we are in an age now that we have not ever experienced as a church before. Could it be a test of faith, a test of vision, perhaps, a test of determination, a test of imagination? The answer to that question is yes to all four. It calls upon us to answer the questions, where is our faith? Where is our vision? Where is our determination? Where is our imagination? Are we able to think big and to realize the possibilities? The question is still for us today. If God were to ask, can there be abundant life beyond what we are going through now? What will happen to the church? What will happen in the lives of people? Folks, I've told you before, the church is not a building. <laughs> the church has not been closed. They've been deployed. That's a wonderful statement. Thirdly, God gets us involved. Now, here in verses 4, 5, and 6, he calls upon Ezekiel to speak a prophetic message. Look, he says, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. That was the message that he was supposed to proclaim. 
It is a question of obeying the voice of God. God says, this is what I want you to say. And Ezekiel was to speak the word. I don't know about you, but I tend to learn better by doing than just by watching or hearing. Now, a perfect learning experience is one where you hear and you see and you do. It involves all of those experiences. But God desires to move in response to our involvement in our day-to-day -day lives. Not just in these days, but what about later? What are we going to do when we can become more active publicly? Here's a question for you. Do we dare to attempt something so big that only with God's help will it come to pass? Would you dare to try something like that? You see, God always makes up the difference in our shortfall. If God calls upon us to do something, it's a promise for help. He will supply the need and he will give you the grace, the strength, the power, the vision to see it through. An old proverb says this, they that think they can and those who think they can't, are both usually correct. It's a mindset. It's a determination. It's a trust beyond ourself. Sometimes we can become self-defeated when we think that it all relies upon us. Should we plan as if it all depends on God and work as if it all depends on us. <laughs> what a winning combination. We must answer the question, what is my part in the midst of these days? What is my part? What am I supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to be living? How am I supposed to be speaking? Ministry has been sucked out of my life. Really? That's just not true. God says, there's still life. Are we listening for his, vo his voice? To guide us? To tell us what we should say and what we should do? Fourthly, God's leading demands a response. Now, we've already covered the fact that Ezekiel was told to speak. And he did. Ezekiel obeyed the voice and the command of God. Just do it is a common catchphrase these days. We can listen, hear, and understand all day long, but until we act, Situations and circumstances remain unchanged. The hardest part about any tough project or any long journey is to start. We can defeat ourselves before we even begin. But we find that once we take the first steps, in response to the leading of God, in response to a walk of faith, in a response to trample on our own doubts and frustrations. If we're willing to just start, it's amazing how motivation can come. Now, God told Ezekiel what to do. Ezekiel did it. After Ezekiel obeyed, God responded. What an amazing pattern. God tells me what to do. I do it. 
and God responds by blessing the effort and making up the difference where if it isn't up to me, then God has to get involved to make up the shortfall. There is a pattern for our faith when we obey, you see. Question, will you? Answer, I will. Response, we do. Follow-up, God does. It's amazing what can come about. And it's amazing what life can become. Lastly, God teaches us lessons by example. Now we find that this passage is an example and a prophecy for the nation of Israel. The example of these bones and Israel, from bondage to exile, from freedom to independence. We not only read about it in the Word of God, some of us have actually lived through the days where Israel became a nation again in these days. But what about the example of life of Christ as a model? A life lived to demonstrate the power of God. A ministry example that touched multitudes. God still breathes life. Now the hope of new life, when all looks dead and hopeless, is in the hands of God. Look at our days today. From separation to connectedness, the bones come together. From a bare skeleton of existence, <laughs> boy, <laughs> reading my mail, from bare skeleton of existence to muscle and mass. So here's the body being reformed. The child of God being reformed in the quietness of where we are right now. Being brought together. But folks, there's more to it than just being called to life and being put back together. From a stillness comes the infilling of the very breath of life, you see. It's not about just existing. It's about living in a powerful new way right where we are with the anticipation of being turned loose, then what are we going to do? Can we use this time as a time of revival and refocusing? Gathering our thoughts and realizing that God meets with us where we are? I can only imagine how Ezekiel must have felt, both in the call and in the realization of the rattling of the bones and then coming together. I don't know about you, but if I was alone out on a desert valley and bones started coming together, that would be an eye-opening experience. But do you notice that Ezekiel was never fearful? He was never afraid because he trusted the voice of God and he obeyed the voice of God. And after all comes back together, the breath of God is breathed into them and they become life. So you see, no matter how dry, how dead and defeated you may feel or how you see that others appear, God has a plan of new life for you that can be the rebirth of something very powerful that will not leave you feeling disconnected and alone. 
God can bring new life to anyone who will hear his voice and respond. These days have been an opportunity for us to recognize the many facets that we call life. We recognize the fresh importance of daily routines, don't we? We have been given an opportunity to retreat, to refresh, and to reflect. Not to grumble and complain and lament. Folks, I call upon us to change our attitude, to change our outlook, to recognize that this is a time to rest upon the Spirit of God and to allow Him to breathe new life into all of us. If you're listening to this video and you're saying, well, You know, I've never really had that life with Christ. You know you can. Just by saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me for my sin. Give me new life. Put the pieces of my life back together. Oh, God. Breathe new life into me. Make me new. It's as simple as that, my friends. And for those who say, Well, I am a child of God, but I sure am discouraged in these days. Well, who hasn't been? These can be frightening days, uncertain days. I'm not going to doubt that. I'm not going to debate that. But what are we learning? What are we hearing from God? Are we taking some time to retreat into the word of God and prayer and to allow his spirit to wash over us in fresh new ways? I call upon each of us to use this time wisely and prepare for the fresh breath of God. Amen? Let's pray together. Almighty God, as we have studied this passage together, We can only imagine what it must have been like in the day of Ezekiel. A valley of dry bones. The challenge to speak a bold message that has been given from you. And then as we put ourselves into Ezekiel's shoes and we are transported to this day and age, Lord, I would ask that you help us to silence our lives enough to hear your voice, to hear your call upon us. You may speak to each individual differently, and yet, Lord, our lives can still be fragmented, and the solution still remains the same, that your spirit can breathe life into each one of us. Oh, God, make it so. Give us the peace that passes all understanding. Give us the trust and the bold assurance that you can bring all things back together and make all things new. Make it so, we pray, in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us today. If you'd like to go to our website, there are some resources there. That is ogfmc.com. This sermon would be posted there. You can watch it anytime you like. There are some resources on that page. There's a giving tab that if you'd like to give to the ministry of our church, you have the opportunity to do that. Thank you for being so faithful. Thank you for listening, and thank you for allowing us to come into your home for this brief time. I challenge you now to go and to allow the Spirit of God to use you in amazing new ways. Amen.
Because he lives.